Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. There is a lot of attention paid to the 12 hallmarks of aging, but these are all based on physiological markers. However, psychology also plays an important part in aging and longevity and can be a bigger influence than some of the more established factors. This paper is a call for psychobiological hallmarks to be added. Two of the authors are Dr. Alex Zavaronikov from In Silico Medicine and Dr. Michael Snyder from Stanford University, both of whom we have spoken to on the channel in the past. Note that this is a perspective paper, and so is sharing the author's opinion on a topic rather than talking directly about new research. Psychological factors are robust predictors of health span and lifespan, but are generally not included in scientific or medical frameworks. Psychogenic, which means to have a psychological cause rather than a physical one, aging research is a new area of research looking at the impact of psychological factors on aging. It aims to integrate psychological, neurological, and cellular relationships. The authors argue that psychogenic aging should be included in the hallmarks of aging framework so that psychology can be integrated into longevity research. As a reference, here are the currently proposed hallmarks of aging from the 2023 paper by Lopez Otin et al. Genomic instability, telomere attrition, epigenetic alterations, loss of proteostasis, disabled macroautophagy, dis deregulated nutrient sensing, mitochondrial dysfunction, cellular senescence, stem cell exhaustion, altered intracellular communications, chronic inflammation, and dysbiosis. As you can see, none of these refer to psychological factors. Behavioral and psychological factors are also integral to the aging process and have clinical re relevance. The authors argue that including them in the hallmarks would make them more complete and advance the field. In proposing that a measure should be considered a hallmark of aging, the authors suggest the following criteria. It should be associated with aging, have biological plausibility, have predictive value, be modifiable, and have broad significance. The authors say that there is no agreed upon criteria. However, the papers from Lopez Otin do specify three criteria for a hallmark. It has age associated manifestations. Promoting it accelerates aging and inhibiting it decelerates or even reverses aging. I think there is a reasonable overlap between the two sets of criteria. Psychological hallmarks should be distinct from the physical hallmarks. All the current hallmarks are understood to show a loss of function with increased age. Whereas the psychological hallmarks may lead to a loss or gain of function with age and so could be beneficial. For example, although the fluid capabilities, reasoning and problem solving decrease with age, crystallized intelligence, the accumulation of knowledge that is, increases. Although stress, purpose, social integration, etc., are psychological or social in nature, it should be remembered that they have physiological impacts on the body. This is mostly through the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, or HPA axis. Stress, anxiety, and depression can then lead to neuroendocrine dysfunction and accelerated morbidity or mortality. One of the requirements for hallmarks of aging is that they be associated with acceleration of aging. Here is an example study which looks at the major depressive disorder and how it was related to grim age clock results. The study looked at 444 adults in New Haven, Connecticut, aged between 18 and 50. The first graph shows there is a correlation between the grim age acceleration and response to the stress questionnaire with a p-value of less than 0.001. So the participants with higher stress had more accelerated grim age scores. Another condition is that the marker should be modifiable. In this case, the impact of the stress depended on the amount of emotional regulation and self-control participants had. Those having good self-control, shown with the blue lines, having lower grim age acceleration for the same level of stress. There may be a tendency to overlook social and psychological markers as they are harder to measure. However, some studies have shown that psychosocial factors have a larger impact on mortality risk than some of the well-established factors. This graph comes from a review paper looking at social relationships and mortality risk. In the table, 
they are comparing the impact of different activities on the odds of survival. It's giving the natural log of the odds ratio. So a value of zero means no effect and a larger number means a larger effect. The three measures of social relationship are shown at the top with a larger impact than some of the other established measures. I noticed smoking, excessive alcohol consumption and being obese. One more case on the importance of psychological factors, in this case, attitude or mindset. Here is an example of this in the risk of Alzheimer's. This graph is from a study of 4,765 participants in the US who were over 60 years of age. They were tested with a questionnaire called Attitude Towards Aging and followed up for four years. For all the participants, there was a significant reduction in risk of being diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Those with positive beliefs towards aging had a 2.6% risk of having Alzheimer's, whereas those with negative beliefs had 4.61% risk. This was true only more so for those with the APOE4 variant, which increases the risk of Alzheimer's, where in this case, the risk of those with a positive attitude was 2.7%, and those with a negative attitude attitude was 6.14%. Both of these results were statistically significant. The authors propose integrating existing aging clocks and machine learning with psychological, social, and behavioral data. Some clocks have already been developed that predict chronological age and the perception of age from psychological markers. However, a multimodal clock which takes into account all these different dimensions has yet to be developed. Current aging clock and multiomic measurements help to expand the understanding of how the mind shapes mortality and mobility, but there's a lot more work that can be done in this area. Whereas including social and psychological factors in aging research certainly seems to be important, for me the main takeaway was how big the effect of the attitude is in the case of age perception in Alzheimer's and having more resilience in the face of stress it does show that on top of other lifestyle basics of diet, exercise, sleep, etc., having the right mindset and social connections are also really important. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you all well. <laughs>